FetchAI is building an open access tokenized decentralized machine learning network to enable smart infrastructure in the digital economy. And with me is Hamayan Sheikh, the CEO of FetchAI, as well as Jonathan Moore, the Chief Technology Officer. So great to have you both here and great to see you again, Hamayan. Nice to meet you, John. Thank you for inviting us again, Jane. Yes. It's always a pleasure. Well, Very happy to meet you again. So let's talk about the collective learning. Uh, we discussed this briefly, Humayun, in a previous interview that we did, but what is it, and could you go into a little bit more depth about what it is exactly? Yeah, so what we are building is a new um, architecture and a business model around bringing uh, machine learning and AI to a collaborative environment. So what we're really trying to do is bringing different stakeholders who can then train these machine learning models, which in, uh, in current form would be either dominated by bigger corporations or you'll have to spend uh, quite a lot of uh, infrastructure costs to bring uh, machine learning and AI uh, in terms of the data sets and in terms of the, the human resource who can actually do the machine learning and training of the models. So what we're doing is it, we're opening it up to a collaborative environment and building the architecture, the infrastructure where people can come in and benefit from already trained models, train new models and share these models um, for a, a collective uh, improvement of the model. Okay, so everybody can learn from that information and nobody gets an edge apparently, right? Is how I'm understanding it. Yes, and also you keep your data secure. Okay. It's with you. You don't you don't move the data around. All you do is you still improve the models. You actually learn from each other's data sets, but you don't actually share the data itself. Interesting. Okay, so John, explain exactly how the collective learning works. Well, so um, we use uh, we use a combination of uh, blockchain technology and machine learning technology, and um, what blockchain is really good for is, uh, you know, coordinating the activities of different uh, stakeholders uh, and you can introduce different kinds of governance models over over the, the way the machine learning model is trained. So um, you can use uh, economic incentives. You could have a consortium of businesses defining some rules, um, you know, potentially through legal means. Um, and that that provides you the flexibility to um, to serve lots of different uh, use cases. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then Humaya, what's the problem associated with healthcare data in context of the pandemic? And then what is the benefit of your approach? So if you, if you look at what's been happening is that a lot of hospitals are doing these x-rays and you, um, you look at the x-ray, you, you try and detect what infection looks like on an x-ray, for example, and various hospitals would have done their own data sets. These, these won't be huge amounts of data sets, but you, you, have, um, you have enough data sets that you can actually uh, train a, a machine learning model, which can automatically detect COVID, right, for example. Now, if you look at just one hospital, then their data set is limited to that and you can only do so much machine learning on that data set. Now, if you bring all of these uh, hospitals together, now it doesn't matter which country and you can, you can have uh, multiple countries within countries, you can have similar organization, you can have separate organizations. Now, if they all put the data together and trained a model, that would be a much better model. Mm -hmm. and, and John can give you more technical details, but what, what our architecture enables you to do is, um, is get that model trained by all the distributed data sets that's, that is available. And what that enables you to do is it, in, it includes much more variance in the data set. It also improves the machine learning model itself a lot quicker and, and new joiners or the new um, uh, trainers of the model can very quickly um, accelerate their learning and, and actually they can start seeing results from the model. Mm. Now, Jonathan, how successful has collective learning been so far? Well, so, I mean, uh, what, what we showed is, is a kind of proof of concept. Um, what you can imagine is that you, you have a situation where, especially with uh, a pandemic, a kind of um, 
kind of really urgent threat, um, you know, data initially is, is at a huge premium. So um, in some of the experiments we've done, we've seen what would happen if you, you know, the data sets are still quite small. So you can imagine a hospital might start off only having, a, you know, a few hundred examples, which is, you know, not enough really to tra train an accurate model. So the real benefit that we showed with this with the system is that um, by, by combining the information from across those multiple data sets, again, as Hermione said, without sharing the data crucially, um, what you can do is get a dramatic improvement in the in the performance. So they would all automatically very quickly have um, a very accurate machine learning model that they could use to diagnose uh, patients. Uh, and in this particular case, we actually made some, um, you know, uh, improvements to the, the training protocol and we were able to get uh, around 97% accuracy in discriminating um, COVID pneumonia from, uh, from, other ki from other kinds of pneumonia. So what we showed really was that if this, if this infrastructure had been available early on in the pandemic, it could, have, it could have provided early benefits in terms of tri triaging patients uh, and improving their care uh, early on. Well, now you mentioned you focused on COVID-19. How can others get involved and what still is there to learn about COVID-19 that would benefit society? So, so COVID is only um, one type of data set you could be looking at a lot more healthcare data sets. You could actually be looking at, for example, training models for car cardiac diseases. You can, you can look at other multiple various types of diseases. You can actually bring all these um, different hospitals from different regions of the world together to train these models. And, 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 and the best bit is that uh, they can collectively own this model and you know they can actually, uh, train it and then use it uh, as a collective rather than a, as a one organization. So that, that brings this, um, this efficiency, which we're kind of losing out to these uh, just some uh, big corporations which hold these, these data sets and these models. Part of what we're doing by pro providing more access to data is to make that process easy. Uh, and I would say what, what CoLearn is, is towards doing. So is actually building um, a set of tools so people can get involved, they can start using, collaborating with others to actually build the model um, more easily and more effectively than they can uh, themselves. Very interesting. All right, well, thank you so much, Hamayan and John, for joining us and explaining this part of the company. And I look forward to talking to you again. It's been a pleasure as usual. Thank you very much, it's been a pleasure.